If you plan on sourcing retail sites, like for example, GameStop, Five Below, you know, Costco, Dix, uh, Best Buy, a lot of different examples here, right? Then this software is going to be a game changer for you because you no longer have to go through and sort manually on those websites. You can literally run them through the Source Mogul software and it's going to analyze all those products. This is going to save you a ridiculous amount of time because it's going to scan every single item in that online store against the corresponding or related potential listings on Amazon. And then you can obviously sort through to see which ones are already profitable. It's going to save you so much time. It makes your your life and your sourcing so much easier, right? So let me give you examples of what this actually is. And keep in mind, you can get a free trial for this. I was sourcing through this last night and I was like blown away. I was like, holy shit, this is a game changer. I'm super excited to bring this to my students. So for example, what you want to do is once you sign up for Source Mogul and you can get that trial to test it out for yourself and decide for yourself if it's something that you want to pursue. So now if you want to go to search, you can search through Amazon category, and I actually haven't done this yet because I've found that the search by supplier is the way that I like to go, and it's the easiest. So you simply click search now through supplier once you sign up. And you'll see literally right here all the different sites that I can sort through. And there's some, you know, Best Buy is a good one. Obviously, we just passed a few Bath and Body Works, Barnes and Nobles. I found a great a few great ones the other night on Barnes and Noble. Um and obviously, you want to do this, uh, you don't just want to scan them and leave them there, you want to continuously scan them. So what I'm trying to say is, if you scan, for example, Best Buy today, and then you wait like a week and a half, and you come back and try to use that same scan under your results for Best Buy, your products are going to be potentially outdated, your prices are going to be potentially outdated, so I recommend doing it, scanning it when you have the intention of buying for that, or scanning it and then leaving it overnight with a bunch of different sites, and then going through and scanning it. You don't want to be, be looking through outdated stuff, because your prices and the products might be out of stock, and the, like I said, the prices are going to be a little bit off, it's not going to be the same, whether they're running clearance, promotions, etc., okay? So, once you click something, let's click, let's click a, a random one that I haven't clicked before, Let's pick, pick one that's like, uh, and you see all the like the related ones here, right? Even Entertainment Earth, although that's wholesale. So let's try, where's a good one? Let's try Hot Topic. Why not? Now, and it's also going to tell you how many products they have in their store. Let's go Home Depot because they have 18,000 in their store. So if I click Home Depot, it's going to bring it over here. Now, if I also wanted to scan Hot Topic, it's also going to bring it over to there. So let's scan Home Depot. And it's also going to tell you if you have a discount code or voucher that you can put in. And you can also estimate your shipping cost per item, although I don't ever do this. I add it later on if, if, if it's applicable. Um, if I'm buying a couple of different units, usually I end up getting free shipping anyway. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now, the discount uh, code or voucher would be like if you signed up for like Home Depot's email list, right? And they recently, you know, yesterday potentially sent you off like a $10 discount uh, code, then you'd put that in there, right? You put 10%, and that's going to automatically apply 10% to the entirety of the scan on Home Depot, knowing that you have that voucher to add in at the end of the, the uh, cart, right? It's just an easy way to kind of, you know, factor in your profit margin with discount codes. Same thing goes with any of these websites, but look how many there are. It's a complete, complete a game changer. I highly recommend this software. It's going to save you so much freaking time, okay? So now we don't have any discount codes. You might. I haven't allocated for any shipping cost. You might want to do that if you if you want to. I don't do that. We're literally going to hit start search and it's that simple, right? And it's going to pop it up and it's literally going to start searching. Now, this won't take too long. Um, there was like 18,000 in this store, so it might take a couple minutes. But you see it's already 10%, so that it's scanning pretty quickly. But let me go down and find one from uh, one that I was using before. So if we go into like Barnes & Noble, because it has a lot of results here, okay? And I'm going to hit view results. It's going to pop up with all the different results from Barnes & Noble. Now, in the top here is where I'm going to actually filter those results so that I can basically look through those results and save my time, right? Because currently, there's 10,000 freaking results. So just to scan through all these would be the same thing as doing it manually, just in a different interface. So I want to basically go down and hit what my I want my ROIs to be, what my, I want my profit margin to be, potentially my sales rank, and also I want to, I personally like the match rate accuracy all the way up, okay? You'll see as I click that, it's going to slowly potentially drop this down. Uh, it doesn't look like it did it yet, but it might as I do the higher ROI. Now, what this bar right here does, not the sales rank, excuse me, the match rate accuracy, is if you have this all the way up, 
it's going to be looking for more of an accurate comparison and match from the product that is on Barnes & Noble and the product that is on Amazon, right? So it's going to be looking for more indicators of that product to identify it as the same product. That doesn't mean it's a sure thing, but obviously the further left you go on this spectrum right here, the more of a sure match it's going to be on Amazon, right? So you still want to do your homework. Obviously, like I said, this looks pretty obvious. It's funny that Contagion is popular right now because of the whole thing with the coronavirus. Um, so that's kind of funny. But uh, you, so this looks like it's the same, obviously, because it is on high match rate accuracy and a lot of them will be, but you still want to check it to make sure, Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go remove products without a buy box. You don't have to do that. That's just going to kind of filter the results a little bit more. So remove the products without a buy box. Um, I'm going to raise my ROI up to like 30% because I like to start a little bit more specific. And then if there aren't enough results, I'll broaden out from that perspective. So I'm going to go 30% and I'm also going to go like $7 profit margin. Now, sales rank, I'm going to go one all the way to maybe like 100000 so we'll go like a hundred thousand right there and that's by numbers i have my match rate accuracy up i have one to a hundred thousand sales rank i also have a 30 percent roi and i have a seven dollar profit margin right i also clicked uh you know remove the buy box and then i could also click remove products that are or only show products that are merchant fulfilled so knowing that if i ship them into fbi i have a vast you know uh, or a superior potential listing and more of a chance to get the buy box than those people right uh, you can also remove the products with no category. Pretty self-explanatory. I don't ever really click these, but you can play around them with them if you like. Now, because I moved all my parameters like that and I made it a little bit more specific, you can see here that there's still 1,600 listings here. So this one right here, and I'm not going to go too specific, although you could, that's still a lot of listings. So maybe you want to raise this up to like 40% and this to like a $10 profit margin, but I'm not actually sorting through this right now. I plan on doing it later, but I'm going to actually show you how you can analyze this. So it's also going to show you the sales rank, right? The Amazon price. So a little kind of keep a graph right here. It's going to show your estimated profit. So $7 profit margin. It's going to show you your sales rank. So this is 729. It's also going to so show you your ROI. So it's telling me I'm going to get a roughly 150% ROI on a $7 profit margin. So we can check this deal out by clicking on the pictures. So if I click on this picture on the left, it's going to take me to the Barnes and Noble listing. So I want to make sure that it is still indeed in stock and $4.99 like it says. So it is in stock, it's DVD, and it is $4.99 like it says. So that is a great potential opportunity. So I want to click the picture in Amazon and make sure that, okay, this is actually an Amazon deal that is 1966. And is it? Amazon, it's a DVD, and it is, this do doesn't have a buy box, which is weird. But if we click this, it looks like it is roughly 1966 because the, the person right here has a new offer, but it has shipping, so it's not FBA. So I can use the online seller add-on like I've talked about before, or I can just click the prime and new to see who I'm actually competing against. So really, I'm only competing against one person who has their buy box or who has the, the buy box potentially at 1999. So roughly, it is a 1966 or even more potential sale price on Amazon. So that means if I do buy it for $4.99 on Barnes & Noble and I resell it back on Amazon for $19.66 roughly, maybe I drop the price a little bit at $18.99 or maybe I match the buy box price at like $19.20 by the time I get it in, right? There's still a $7 profit margin to be made per unit. So I'm spending $4.99, I'm making, you know, whatever that is, you know, a $19 sale and I'm netting $7.42 after the purchase price and after the fees on Amazon. So that is 150 ROI, right? Because I'm turning $5 into like seven to 50. Pretty solid if you ask me, and the sales rank is relatively low. Now you still wanna go back to the, the detail page and do your homework. So you need to ask questions like, can I sell this? So you would take the ASIN, like I always say, take it into your seller central and see if you can sell it. Pretty self-explanatory, right? So ASN into seller central, see if you can sell it. Now you also want to, check the sales velocity of this because depending on the category it may or may not be selling well it might be in a subcategory right here or it might be in the main category so 503 in movies and tv is pretty well uh selling pretty well in my opinion but let's run the jungle scout chrome extension to make sure it's telling me that it's selling 21 daily sales 630 a month so that is a pretty solid buy so if i pull the calculator up just to kind of show you here if i source this for 499 right that's what it was 499 
That's not counting shipping, potentially, if I don't buy enough to get free shipping on Barnes & Noble, but we'll see that here in a second. I'm going to es estimate that it costs me about a buck to ship these into Amazon. It could cost me a little bit less, but I like to usually be on the conservative side. And if I match the buy box price at 1969, I think it said, 1966, then what is my potential profit margin? Well, then my potential profit margin right here becomes 643. So it's not as good as Source Mogul basically told me, but it's roughly probably somewhere in between 643 and 742. So it is still over 100% ROI because I'm spending 499. Then I make, it ends up being 599 to ship it in total, right? And I'm making 643 per unit. So this is a good buy, assuming everything else checks out for you, assuming you can sell it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let me go through one more example here. Now, obviously, I'd make sure that these are the same exact thing, but they were like I showed you. Often you'll see one that looks similar that isn't the same, but often if you do have this all the way up to a high match rate accuracy, it will be the same. But you can see the power of this software and just how many product opportunities there are here to purchase. Perfect example right here. This is something I'd stay away from because this is a different edition, right? So while it is high match rate accuracy, this is just the normal version of this DVD right here or the, the CD or whatever it is. This is the deluxe version. So different thumbnail completely, different picture, deluxe edition, not the same. So even if they had the same thumbnail, I definitely click them to make sure, right? So now I want to go through and I want to look for a better product opportunity potential. Uh, so right here, Leslie Sanzone Walkway the Pounds Ultimate Collection. Leslie Sanzone Walkway the Pounds Ultimate Collection. Looks the same to me. Looks like they have the same thumbnail. Let's check the Barnes & Noble one. Let's check the Amazon one to see if they both check out. So on Barnes & Noble, this is selling uh, used and new for $15.85. So this is telling me it's going to sell 1436, but is it used or new? We'd have to check that out. I don't want to click this because I don't know if it's going to show you my address or not. But let's assume that this is actually a used or new or you or a new uh, one for right now. Uh, so then this DVD is selling for 44.96 on Amazon, and obviously I'd click this to make sure. But like I said, I don't want to demonstrate my address online. I've I've had you know uh, bad experiences with that in the past. So I don't want to actually say, show that. But so let's assume that it was. So then this becomes a good buy. They're the same exact thing, right? DVD, walk away the ultimate pounds collection. DVD, walk away the ultimate pounds collection. So that is solid, right? I'm sourcing this for fourteen thirty six, and it's selling for forty four ninety six on Amazon. So I want to see if there's a margin. I also want to see if I can sell it, and I want to see the sales velocity to make sure that it's selling. Obviously, that I can sell it, and then that there's a profit margin to be made. So let's overestimate. Let's say I'm sourcing it for fifteen bucks. Let's say it's going to cost me a dollar to ship it in. If I match the buy box price at forty-four ninety-six and share the share the sales, my profit margin is seventeen ninety-three. So that's still over a hundred percent ROI. It's one hundred twelve percent ROI. So that's a good buy if if it's selling well and if I can sell it, right? So to make sure you can sell it, you want to take the ASIN, and I don't actually have my Seller Central up, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You take the ASIN, take it into Seller Central, add a product, see if you can actually sell it. If you can sell it, then it's obviously a good buy. If you can't sell it, click request approval to see if you're auto ungated, if you have decent metrics. And if you're not auto ungated and ask for an invoice, avoid this product and avoid products like that. So let's assume that you can sell this. It is 8,000 in movies and TV. So that might be a lower category. So let's check. It is still selling two daily sales and it's still uh, selling 126 monthly sales. So pretty solid product. I would go ahead and source this assuming that this is a new offer right here. Although it does say used and new. So I'm assuming that it is obviously. So those are two examples literally I just found in like five to 10 minutes going slow, giving you a tutorial of how to use Source Mogul to make money sourcing through retail sites. You don't need to do it manually anymore. This software is a game changer.